What's up guys, Asian here again, and this is a little bit of a different video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys ESO logs. So this has been a fairly controversial topic on the official forums. Um, so there's been a lot of concern over what is in these logs, kind of what the website looks like, what the website collects when you upload these logs. So I figured I'd show you guys kind of the uh, how I've been using the website so far and give you a quick peek into um, the information that is actually within these logs here. So first, uh, in order to get onto the website, you do need to go to esologs.com and then from there you can create a account here using your uh, email address and then you can basically start uploading logs. So uh, there is a uh, extension that you do need to download in order to use upload logs. Um, so if you you're right. Uh, you guys can't see that because my face is in the way here. So let me just quickly get rid of that. All right. You guys can see here that I have made my account here and I have a couple of uh, guilds here. You will see that there is a download here for the client that you're going to need to install if you want to upload logs to the website. So you just need to install this client and then uh, it'll be able to read any logs that you have uh, and put them into your respective guilds here. And I'll show you guys what that client looks like in a little bit. You can see here that I am part of three guilds. Uh, so obviously I've been, I'm in Mayflower and then I have Hellfire Dominion's War Council. Then I also have personal logs, which uh, I probably won't use. I'll probably just end up using these two uh, in order to differentiate my diff the different logs from each other. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at the logs that are currently in Mayflower. So first, uh, in order to create a guild, pretty easy. Uh, you just have to uh, let's go here. Again, up here, you can just go create a guild or you can join a guild. So if you want to go ahead and join a guild, you do need to have a code. So whoever created the guild will need to basically give out this code to people who they want to join that guild. Uh, otherwise, if you want to create your own guild, you can just go to create a guild. Create your guild name, the faction, the region, the realm, uh, which is basically just a mega server. And then if you have like a Discord link, you might want to share. If you're going to be, um, this is going to be a public guild, for example. But description of your guild, you can also put the, the, the default rank. So this is anybody who uh, clicks onto the link for your guild. Uh, this is the default rank that they have. It's either going to be applicant, a recruit, a member, or an officer. And obviously there are different permissions for all four roles here. Uh, so that's basically how you create a guild and if we go ahead and take a look at for example Mayflowers You have basically have three options or I should say you have a couple of options here when it comes to uh, which guild so You can see here. This is the Mayflower uh, Guild page here. We have the calendar which basically shows you uh, the different uh, Logs that have been uploaded to this specific guild so you can see we have probably gonna be filling up Monday and Thursdays because that's when we typically raid um, so we have two logs from Monday night and we have a Thursday night's run uh, log here as well. You can see exactly who uploaded it and whether it is private or not. So if you see this little lock icon here, this does mean that it's private. You can take a look at the specific reports by going to reports. Take a look at characters. There is certainly currently no information in characters because all these reports are private. Um, but the characters can be claimed. Uh, so if you create an account and you upload a log, that character name will be claimed by you. And you have settings uh, which you typically are not able to uh, adjust if you're not the guild master here so you can see the, the join code the join code url if uh, the guild master allows you to share that stealth mode so this basically says that if the guild uh, exclusively has private logs so all of your logs are private and can only be viewed by the guild itself uh, you can enable this mode to basically prevent any personal logs uploaded by guild members from ranking so the idea behind this website is to provide some sort of ranking mainly for dungeons because there's already a ranking system and leaderboard system for trials um, so this basically prevents people who leave the guild from exposing the guild's private logs in global rankings or on a character page uh, and then there's obviously uh, an attendance sheet, uh, which I'm not 100% sure exactly what this is. It just kind of just says, uh, continuously says loading data here for me sometimes. Rankings, uh, so there's not no rankings yet because this hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, and then there's obviously the Discord link if there is a Discord link uh, offered here. So you can set one here, but you do need to have basically have a... Um, you need to have the guild master's positions or an officer in order to create this Discord. So this is basically what the guild looks like. Um, so if we go ahead and take a look at uh, one of our reports, let's take a look at the Wednesday night report here. 
So this is what a report will look like. So it'll basically have all your encounters here, and then you have each individual boss. So we have Yon, Not Korean, Locustis, Navintas. So this is only active on the PTS right now. So obviously we've been basically been doing um, Tunspire this whole time. So we have four fights here. So Yon, Not Korean, Locustis, Navitas, and then we have Yon, Not Korean, Undead, Hard Mode. And you can see here that you can actually pick which fight you want to take a look at. So you have five fights from Hard Mode Pull here. We had two fights with Navintas, we had two fights with Locusties, and we only had one fight with Yul Nakreen, which is why we don't have a select all option here, or show all option. Then you do have some trash fights as well that are listed down here. Um, and then you can have all the encounters uh, just by clicking on this encounter link. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the Yul Nakreen fight here. So this is basically what the log will look like. So you do have a couple of different options here, and I won't be going through all of them. You guys can explore this. Uh, we, we can't explore this uh, particular log, but you can upload your own log and explore it yourself. But all of it is very pretty intuitive. So you have all of your sort of summary statistics here. The damage done, damage taken, healing, threat, which is um, really just taunt, buffs, debuffs, deaths, interrupts, dispels, resources, and casts. So, uh, and then you have basically all the members of your team here. So uh, you have the two tanks, you have eight DPS, you have the two healers here. You can see how much, which, how much DPS each person is doing on this fight. So you can see here that Riffle Inverse did the most amount of DPS here, followed by Octavio Per, and so on and so forth. You can see which damage is uh, your guys are taking. So you can see here Focus Fire did the most amount of damage the healing done and you can see how, uh, what people died to who died in the fight and at what time during the fight that they died so you can see here stabby the templar died from flare at 50 seconds into the fight if you go ahead and hit uh and hit the plus button here uh so you, then you, you can see that you, there's a lot of different things you can click on so you can click on each individual's name and it'll pull up the specific information for that person's name so let's go ahead and click on my name here and it'll basically show you what my bars are what my gear was, uh, and then damage done by ability, healing done by ability, damage taken by ability, if I had any deaths here. And this is all sort of wrapped out here too, uh, right here. We can see that the, you have different lines, and this is throughout the, the whole duration of the fight here. Um, so you have healing done, healing received, damage done, damage taken. This is under the summary tab. Now we can also go ahead and take a look at, let's say I want to know what sort of debuffs I put out. Go ahead over to the debuffs tab here. It will take a little bit of time in order for it to load. Then you can uh, put cast by friendly rather than gain by friendly. And you can see exactly which debuffs I, I threw out here. So you can see I had taunt and it'll actually show you graphically uh, where your uptimes are at. So you can see engulfing flames was, I did a really poor job here. Um, so you can see engulfing flames is up only during these little bit of iterations. They don't line up directly here, but you can go ahead and click on engulfing flames. It'll take a little bit to load here, and you can see exactly where uh, your Engulfing Flames uh, is active during the fight. You can see which uh, enemy is affected by it, and you can see when it completely goes away. So you can see I put it on at 22 seconds into the fight, and it went away at 42 seconds. Then over here, this is the second application here, so 57 to a minute and 7, and so on and so forth. You can change it from up here, or you can click on the specific ability on the bar right here if you, if you would like. Um, so this is like debuffs, uh, so if we go ahead and take a look at the, the different options here, you have timelines, events, and queries, so let's go ahead and take a look at events here. Again, this does take some time for it to read everything, and this is basically just a combat log. So this is basically more or less what you would expect to see from like a combat metrics report if you had the combat metrics combat log going on your chat. It'll tell you exactly which ability was cast and what time, so you can see here that I uh, taunted it right at the beginning of the fight. Um, in a rage faded away. I don't know what that means. I think this is the synergy. You can see here that I then used major fracture or major breach uh, and the taunt fades and I reapply the taunt. So it will say the taunt fades and reapply the taunt every time you do it. You can see I did minor maim, which basically most likely came from um, heroic slash here and so on and so forth. You can see that I have all these sort of events going on here and this is for all abilities and again you can adjust it. So if you want to see damage done, you can go damage done, look at the events. And this is again very pretty much identical to what the comment metrics uh, comment report already says here. So you can just see that I did this amount of damage with inner rage, this amount of damage with pierce armor, and so on and so forth here. Now, one of the biggest uh, kind of tools here with ESO um, 
with ESO logs is the replay option here. So if we go ahead and take a look at the replay option for this fight, and take a little bit of time here to load up, so you will see a map of basically whatever sort of arena you're in. So this is a uh, Yulnak Green, so we're going to be fighting right around this middle island here, this big island right here. So go ahead and hit play here. You'll see that it starts to play in real time what everybody's position is in during a fight. So you can see that we have myself over here and everybody else is gathered up over here. You can see in real time the health, any sort of a move that's you on the green soon. So you can see here he's doing his fire breath right now. Down here you can see everybody's health, where it's going. So you can see my health is dropping, everybody else is not dropping because I am doing a good job. It's a tank and I am taunting things. Um, and you can see health is slowly going down here. You can see again any sort of abilities that is being cast here. You can see any ads that spawn. So you can see at this point we have a fire, two fire Atronax and an iron servant that spawned here. And you can see that people are moving around here. And you can adjust the speed down here. You can adjust the features down here as well and what filters you're seeing. So if I don't want to see the players, for example, I can just hit players and that'll hide all the players. If I don't want to take a look at the NPCs, I just want to look at the bosses and players, I can take away NPCs. If I want to include any sort of combat pets, so you can see here that we have the Vault of Familiar from Rifle Inverse here. Now you can see that Yul Nocturne is moving, uh, and this is because it managed to hit the health threshold here, so now he's moving around. Go ahead and take pets off here. You can see basically what more or less is what's happening here. So here is, uh, so there are a couple of things, weird things that are happening here. So uh this really is if you go ahead and go back here this is when he's doing his giant fire breath in the center here that's what this icon is indicating you can see that we have the lava iron servant guide now the lava pool was also showing up so if you take a look here you have the lava pool and this is the lava pool that spawned from the iron servant and then Joel not is coming in and he's going to blast the center here with pyroclasm um so this is an incredibly useful tool here you can see basically more or less what people are dying to, where they're dying, and if the you know what's the best way to sort of diagnose things. So if you go back to the analyze tool here, and we go ahead and go over to a different fight. Let's say uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Dolnakreen, our last good pull here, which was a very solid pull. If we go ahead and take a look at deaths, we'll be able to see exactly where people died and what they died to. So right here you can see that Octavio Per died to a Fire Atronax Lava Geyser, and it's at 28 seconds. I died at 1 minute to Pyroclasm, and it'll actually show you the last 3 hits. Um, and then at a minute and 2, Riffle died from Bite, probably because I died. And you can also see how much time it took in order for you to die. So this all happened within 5.9 seconds for me, and you can see here if it's just gets you in one hit then it's obviously a one shot here you can see it just keeps on going down and over and over over here so uh definitely an incredibly powerful tool here you can see your buff up times you can see debuff up times you can see who's doing the most damage uh, you can see what skills have been interrupted there aren't any sort of interrupts here uh, i believe um so but you can see here that uh there are actually a few interrupts that happened here. So you can see that the Flame Atronach started to cast Flare on Sundare Waifu Pillow, and then Daisy Daphnios Aphid Noise uh, used Unrelenting Grip to interrupt the move here. So it's actually pretty interesting how detailed it all goes. And if we go into Dispels, you can see it loads up that there's nothing here because there wasn't anything to really cleanse here. So overall, an incredibly powerful tool. Now, the actual log file itself that it's pulling from, so let's go ahead and pull it up here, is, I don't know, go here, uh, nope, I believe I archived it, so I do have to go here. So it is under the PTS, so if you go to the ESO folder, right now it's only live on PTS, but once it's on live, you do have a logs folder on live as well. Go to PTS, logs, and it will be shown up here with encounter as the title. I mean, once you upload it, you have the option to delete it or archive it. So I decided to archive it and I will delete this folder eventually. You can see here that the file sizes are actually fairly large. So this is the uh, two hour raid, uh, about about two hour raid or so. If we take a look here, you can see it's 263 megabytes. So it is a fairly large file. So you might want to use a separate hard drive or you might just want to delete it after you upload it. So 
take a look here at the actual encounter log itself once it loads up because it is a fairly large file here. This is basically what it all looks like. It's just a basic uh, lots of numbers here, uh, effects, uh, and then just basically a huge slew of numbers. Now, it is possible to create something that will be able to read these numbers. Um, for those of you guys who are concerned about your at names being shown up, it only shows up here on the actual log itself. And you can see that you have the character name and you have the at names here. So it connects your character name to your at name here. And this isn't really anything that can't already be kind of obtained already through current in-game tools. So, you know, the you can obviously gain somebody's uh, at name and connect it to their character name just by taking a look at group finder your grouping tools and taking a look there so you uh again this by itself is not incredibly useful you do need to have some sort of tool in order to actually make use of this log itself now if we go ahead and take a look here at the eso logs uploader this is the client that you're going to need to use to in order to um to upload a log to the website so you have three options here. You can upload a log. So basically you finished rating, you finished logging your encounter. So now you can want to upload it. You can do live log. So you're about to start rating and you want the log to rate in real time. I do not recommend doing this. And then split a log. I have not tried this yet, but apparently you can split a log file that contains multiple raids without uploading it. So if you're obviously going to want to upload a log, then you can go ahead and choose which log you want to put up. You can select which uh, guild or your personal log if you don't want to uh, put it into any guilds here. You can also choose a raid team for the report if their guild does have a raid team, for example. Then you can decide whether it's public, which means everybody can see it, private, which means only you can see it, or unlisted, which means only people who have links to the report itself are able to to, uh, to access the log. Um, and then from there, you can also include a description for the report if you'd like. And then you hit go and it'll automatically upload. So I already uploaded it. So if I hit go right now, it'll probably say something like I can't find a log or anything like that. So that is pretty much it for the combat log, ESO log. So I think it is an incredibly powerful tool for raiders uh, to use, especially progression style guilds, because of this hopeful summaries statistics here. You're able to really tell, you know, what people are dying to, where people are dying. Um, you can see damage, things like that. A lot of these tools are, you can already basically use in game. So things like quarter reflexes already will show you people's DPS if they are using it. Um, but so the real key thing here is is you can tell precisely when somebody died what exactly they died to and you have that replayability here uh, in order to kind of replay the fight basically blow by blow um, and really sort of pick apart what's happening here so again uh, this is you know, like fed hard mode so we go ahead and hit play here and you can even include things like damage done and you can see how much uh, damage is being done here you can see damage taken by ability, so you can see how much which ability is being used right now, and so on and so forth. So this is a very, very powerful tool that I anticipate a lot of progression style guilds to be using once it goes live. So that is it for this video. If you guys have any questions about ESO logs, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, I will try to communicate with the creator of ESO logs to answer any questions you guys might have here. Hope you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.